Hey everybody, it's your old pal Steve Moore here, owner of Run More, this fabulous brick and mortar running shop located in Westminster, Maryland. Uh, today we have a couple shoes for you. We're gonna be talking about the new Brooks Hyperion 2 line. We're gonna be talking about the Hyperion Max and the Hyperion 2 GTS and non-GTS versions. This is a go fast line from the Brooks family that is kind of positioning themselves as an up-tempo comp trainer, however you wanna look at it, but these shoes have a little bit more of an elevated midsole to it. You can tell even aesthetically what they're kind of going for, and as uh, somebody who's been carrying this shoe on our wall for just about a week now, it has certainly fit the bill as that shoe that like younger kids or kids that are looking to go faster, or adults like myself looking to go faster, have picked up because it just has that fun, sleek, I wanna go fast, I wanna be on your foot type of look to it. So let's get into a couple of nitty gritty specs, and first, we're going to start with the Hyperion Max 2, um, just because that's the one that happens to be in my hand. Um, this shoe has come, bumped up a little bit on a couple specs, so we're going to hop right into it. First off, they lowered the heel drop on this. This shoe used to be an 8 millimeter shoe, and now it's a 6 millimeter shoe. Uh, added some weight to it. On the men's side, this is a 9.1 ounce shoe. On the women's, it's 8.1 ounces. Uh, a little bit different of a midsole to it. This is a DNA Flash version 2 versus a version 1. Um, and they added two millimeters of height to it as well. So this shoe now comes in at 30 millimeters high and 24 down low on this guy. And they've updated the tongue toy. This is now totally gusseted in and a much more locked and secure fit when you slip it on. So just some of the things right out of the gate on the Hyperion Max 2. Um, I was very much looking forward to this. I actually loved the Hyperion Max 1. This was one of the shoes from Brooks last year that I put a ton of miles on. They look in great shape too, by the way. I really have put this shoe through a lot of stuff, track workouts, road runs, tempo stuff, you know, just some LSD days where I wanted to just have like a nice fast paced shoe to make my miles go a little bit easier. So I was super amped up to try the new one. And especially because some of the things that they changed on this, I was very excited about. Adding a little bit more cushion to it, um, lowering the heel drop. Version two also features what they call their, their, sp their speed vault plate. You know, it's like what we're seeing in some other brands now in this same $180 price by putting some sort of plastic plate in it, a nylon plate, something that's not a carbon plate that you find in a racing shoe, but something just a little more performancey to sort of separate this from shoes that are in that light cushion performance trainer to your high-end racing shoe. This guy kind of falls right in between, and we're seeing a lot more shoes in this category. Version one featured no plate. So version one was just like a traditional DNA, traditional, a DNA flash midsole and a DNA flash midsole version two, but with the plate to it. And you know, I will tell you, this shoe obviously had a lot more cushion to it, and it had a lot more weight to it. You know, we went from 7.8 to 9.1 on the men's. And I will tell you that popping it on, I didn't feel much of a weight difference. And just, you know, when I was looking at the specs and such before I popped it on, that was the first thing I thought I would notice is that for some reason I thought this shoe would be much clunkier because that is a tremendous amount of weight to add on a shoe that you're hoping to make go faster. We've really beefed up the shoe, but obviously you had to add some weight because they added some cushion to it. But I didn't notice any of that right out of the gate. I didn't notice the small millimeters, the two millimeters of drop on the cushion level or on the heel drop either. I felt just nice and I felt the shoe fit me very well and as somebody who's been dealing with some foot stuff going on like I thought the width and such felt pretty good for me on it when I was popping it on the store and before I went for a run in it um, and I also very much did like the new upper I like how just that band around the top just held my foot nice and in place and uh, I took this guy out this weekend and did a longer road run in it um, uh, truth be told it was about I don't know 147 degrees out here in Maryland this past weekend so I wanted something nice light and breathable because I had a longer run. I just wanted to kind of get through the run quite honestly. So I was putting on a shoe that I thought would kind of just make the miles go easy and having such great experience in version one, I was very excited to go out and just hope this shoe would make my run go that much easier. Um, now just on a personal level, it kind of didn't for me. Uh, I, I found this shoe by adding the plate to it, again, just personal, I found it really made it much stiffer. Now ironically, when I was just kind of like bending and flexing it, I felt like this shoe had a little more flex to it than the old guy. But when I was running, I don't know, maybe with the addition of the plate, I felt very stiff through the toe box. And I actually felt, even though this has a little more cushion listed, I felt like this had a little less cushion than I was accustomed to in the previous Mac. So it just felt a little bit more 
work for me to get through my run than I had expected, especially by adding the plate. It actually felt like this shoe kind of took a step backwards in the responsiveness. And honestly, during the miles, by the end, like I was ready to take this shoe off. Not so much the width, like my bunions and stuff were all fine, but I just felt it was so stiff to the toe box. It felt like my feet were working very hard. And by the later in the day, I could tell I ran in a shoe that was just a little bit more stiff than I had been hoping to for it. So if you're somebody who does like a stiff shoe, if you're somebody who liked Brooks Hyperion Elite 4, and if you saw that review we put out this spring, I didn't love it because it actually, for me, it became so stiff and so rigid that it kind of bothered my feet. And by the end, my toes kind of hurt, my bunion was bugging me. And I was hoping that this plate would be a little bit softer, just being like a more smooth plasticky plate. But I had some of the same irritations and sort of the same frustrations with the Hyperion Max 2 as I felt in the Hyperion Elite 4. Added some cushion, added some weight, added some stiffness to it. If that's what you're looking for, then I think you're gonna be very happy with this. And we are seeing a lot of new shoes in this category. In fact, in the last probably month, I've tried two different other brands shoes in this same category in that $170, $889 um, everyday trainer that has a little more performance edge to it. So I've got a lot of stuff to compare it to and uh, I, it just didn't quite work for me as well as the previous one, but depending on what you're looking for, this might be more of your wheelhouse. Now, that being said, we're gonna dive into the Hyperion 2. This version right here is the Hyperion 2 GTS. So this actually has the support railings to it. Um, you know, this is the guide rail version, but they also make it in the non-guide rail version. So this is like the little brother, right? So we have our Max, and then we just have our standard version two. Same DNA flash midsole version two. Uh, a lot of the same characteristics. Um, but I will tell you, for me, if you liked version one of the Hyperion Max, I think you're actually gonna really like just the standard old Hyperion version too, whether you get the stability GTS version or the non-GTS version. When you're looking at the specs now, this has a lot of the same specs as version one. One nice advantage is this is 140 bucks. This was $170 coming out of the gate. So now we have the newest midsole version in this, but a lot of the same things we have here. This shoe, weighs about the same as this shoe over here. Now we're looking at about a 7.4 versus 7.8. You know, we have 26 millimeters, we have 26 millimeters. We have eight millimeters of drop, we have eight millimeters of drop. So if you're somebody who really liked version one of the Hyperion Max, and maybe you have some hesitation about pulling the trigger on version two in the Hyperion Max, I think you can save a couple bucks. I think you can actually be pretty happy in just a regular Hyperion version two or the GTS version of it. I found this to be a little bit snappier. It is certainly lighter, you know, it's certainly much more on the scale as the Hyperion Max. I found it snappy, I found it more comfortable. So I think this could be a really good value shoe if you wanted to have a workout shoe, a fast-paced trainer shoe. Obviously it doesn't have quite as much stack height, so maybe if you were looking to do a, you know, a 20 mile road run, maybe this guy isn't in your, in your future. But if you're looking for anything from like a half marathon down for daily training from track stuff to speed stuff to road stuff to race stuff. Honestly, this is a really nice shoe and compared to some of the other $140 shoes in this same category, this shoe is pretty bee's knees. So I, I think, while personally, I think that the Hyperion 2 Max maybe missed the mark for me on a few things. I think the improvements that we saw on the Hyperion 2 and the Hyperion 2 GTS kind of bring that Hyperion line back to where I think it could be. So again, depending on what you're looking for, I think there's gonna be something in that category for you. Here at the shop, we stock the Hyperion 2 GTS. This is one of our more popular shoes, or probably gonna be one of our more popular shoes this summer for kids doing cross country or kids doing track later in the year or adults getting ready for a shoe that they're looking to do half marathon training or you know 5K kind of stuff. Um, but we wanted to carry this one because we wanted to have the shoe that has just a pinch of stability. And one of the things we like about this, it's not overly stable. So even though this is a GTS version and maybe you're more of a neutral runner, I don't notice that there's too much extra correction to it, but just enough that if you're somebody who needs just a little bit of extra form correction, this guy could be great. Or again, how we're pulling it here for new runners who just might have a little bit of, of, of just instability, instability when they're running, that this provides just enough to give them a little bit more guidance while still obviously being a lightweight trainer. It's nice having a stable option in that category because most of the brands we carry with will have sort of a performancey everyday light $140 trainer, but there's not the stable boy to it. So if you're somebody who has lower arches or some pronation, you're sort of left out of the party when it comes to fast-based shoes. So having a Hyperion 2 GTS is actually a very nice thing to the line and we're very happy to have it because it is a differentiation from some of the other stuff in this category. Um, 
Um, so there you have it, the Brooks Hyperion 2 uh, version Super uh, Max and the version 2 and the GTS, and I hope that answers a bunch of your questions. If I failed to answer your question, I apologize. Leave it down below and I'll get back to you as soon as we can. And if you want to purchase one of these fine shoes, that would be super awesome as well. We'll have a link down below. And if you enter promo code RUNMORE, just one word, R-U-N-M-O-O-R-E, we'll ship them out for free and you'll save 10% on your order. Thanks so much. And do me a favor, like and subscribe if you haven't already. It's a super easy, free way to support our shop. Happy running. Come visit us in Westminster, Maryland if you're out our way. See you around town.